Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Uh, today, I am going to be going through the patch notes for the new for, uh, patch 10.1.5, otherwise known as Update 43, which is a base game patch that includes the new Home Tours. Um, home Tours is something I'm going to touch on briefly, um, just from, the, oh, from a mechanic standpoint before I opine on things. Um, you know... The, the big money makers, people, the people who throw around the most cash in this game, continues to be uh, role players and you know just people who enjoy existing in the world. Uh, things like home tours further are an example of uh, the game catering to that. Which, if I'm being perfectly honest, I do enjoy the fact that that is the most um, you know placated to group in Elder Scrolls Online, simply because um, there are a lot of horizontal progression, quality of life, just fun overall around cool things that are added to the game, because our peers and um, you know, housing enthusiasts and fashion enthusiasts are the primary people in the game being the cool thing. So, let's get started. So, let's get started with the Bell Room. Home tours. Uh, you are able to view recommended homes, our favorites, and revisit. Remember, this is useful because also people will put different utilities and stuff in their homes, including sets, standing stones, crafting stations, uh, certain assistance, etc. Um, this is going to make. There is a possibility that this ends up making um, hub areas a little less relevant outside of trading, but you know, it is what it is. You know, I'm not necessarily against the idea of ESO turning into a game where it's like pockets of communities. But th that that could be negative. The game is 10 years old, so uh, you can set custom nicknames. You can uh, describe. You have descriptive tags. Uh, no limit to the number of homes you can list. Uh, try rotating selection of the most recommended houses so you can get like, different stuff. Um, Favorite up to 100 homes listed or not and revisit them. So this, again, this is going to definitely allow for people to kind of not have to go out to Bumblefuck, Malba Tor, or fucking, you know, Deshaun, or, you know, Storm Paven, or whatever the fuck your crafted set's going to be, just to get to craft the same thing. Uh, we got two new homes. Um, Haven of the Five Companions, originally the Sanctuary for the Five Companions. This stately structure features five rooms, one of each for the original companions, plus such a main space. That's actually pretty cool in Westworld. Um, sea Bloom Billy, whatever. So, like, these are going to be really expensive poems that are not necessarily worth it. I do not know if these are going to be purchasable through gold. If they are, great. If not, fuck you. But it is what it is. A uh, bunch of new furnishing plans, new master writ plans, new antiquity furnishing. The Apocrypha Jewelry Crafted Station, which can be earned by collecting antiquity fragments, leads from the Infinite Archive. Man, that's okay, whatever. The Scribbing Altar, a new crafting station, allows you to scrib from the comfort of your own home. Interesting. This can be purchased from Fatia Sekiro for Master. It's lovely! Thank God it's not a fucking ground store. Right? Any War Researcher for Alliance Points, even better. And Violet Tilzars for Archival Fortunes. Great. Love that. You can also purchase it in ground schools. Of course you can. Internet Archive update. This is cool. Uh, I like I like Internet Archive. Two new arenas, a fiery pathway fraught with danger. I see where this I like. It should help with the monotony of doing the Infinite Archive. It is kind of repetitious. Ten new bosses, eight new versus ten new visions, two new marauders. Um front row. Uh, new fabled monsters. Elsewine, a ghost of Ultimate who lost their life in the archive is back for revenge, offering two daily quests targeting either fabled or marauder. Or in a new mystery verse scroll with the power to transform you into a random hat car and unlock a new eye of the infinite to help you combat by person Cool. New class item sets. So one of the things I love most about it the archive that I'm sure many of you do as well is the uh, class uh, sets, which I think is really good. Uh, the Templars uh, have the uh, Etheric Lance. Dealing damage with burning light twice, which I'm just going to read the five the five thing because that's kind of what matters the most in my personal opinion. 
dealing damage with burning light within 30 seconds creates a five meter area for five seconds. This can occur every six seconds while in the area dealing damage with an age of spear ability launches launches a spear to target dealing magic damage and applying sunder and increasing your weapon and spell damage by 306 seconds the damage scales off of your higher weapon spell damage i pray that the night blade one is as uh, sounds as cracked as this sundered being basically you get a, a you get a damage uh is a damage increase your opponent uh, and your opponent is also has minor region breaking, so it does both of those. It's stupid. Um, the five for the new sorcerer is by the pet active gain uh, uh, 1800 health and in, in, in two, 2k armor. Cool. While you do not have a pet active, your damage done and he increases your damage done and healing done by 15. What? So if you're not doing pet sword. You just get 15% increased damage across everything. That's insane. And these values are decreased to 5 while battle spirits activate. Still, 5% overall increased damage is not nothing. Uh, the DK, your light attacks deal flame damage every 2 seconds over 6 seconds. So that's part of the course. Your fully charged heavy attacks consume up to 3 of your damage over time's effect to deal flame damage in a 6 meter radius on the target. Ooh. Dealing up to 200% more damage to enemies below 33% health. The damage scales off the higher of your weapon spell and is increased by 20% for each damage over time effect on the target up to 60%. So, given D Dra Dragon Knights are able to stack status, like, you know, uh, damage over time effects, Kind of cool. Ooh, Nightblade. This is this. Come on, Papa needs a new pair of shoes. When he has a shadow ability, you gain Umbral Repost for three seconds, up to once every six seconds. Umbral Repost causes you to dodge the next attack attack made against you, and automatically curses the attacking enemy, applying minor major vulnerability. Huh. That's not fucking bad. Unironically, I like that. That's pretty damn good. And it adds health, stamina, armor. Love that. That's awesome. Um, the problem, the only problem I have with this is that it is not proactive. It is reactive. And given, you know, especially in a PvP sense, Nightblades are going to be... Because here's the thing. Fully dodging the next attack made against you is... I mean, it's not fantastic, but like it, you know, it, it that is helpful. Um, and you know, pairing that with you know invisibility, I, I, it could be good. It could be. Um, I think the my, major vulnerability is fun. I, the only thing that I'm a little tweaked about this is this could save you from getting killed, but I don't know if that is necessarily worth the. Five, the set five bonus here, um, but fellow Nightblades, get in the comments and tell me how if I if I'm right or wrong about this. I personally, in a PvP situation, uh, prefer a um, proactive set rather than a reactive set. But that's just me. Also, I don't necessarily see how this is going to be super useful for uh, uh, being a PVE sweatboard either. So that's that's just me. Uh, Warden. Uh, if a light, if dealing damage with a light attack applies Eagle's Mark to your opponent for 12 seconds. Eagle's Mark causes an Eagle to attack your opponent every 3 seconds after a 3 second delay, dealing physical damage per attack and increasing your damage done with Animal Companion abilities again uh, uh, by 10% against it. Not bad. That sounds like this. Ugh, man. That makes, all of these kind of make me sad because like, this is... All of this, like, so far, everything's gotten a straight damage buff, except Nightblades. That's frustrating. Consuming a course causes it to explode, dealing damage damage within 5 meters, increasing by 5%, 10% for each Gravelord ability slotted. Well, shit. This effect can occur every uh, half second, and scales off the higher of your weapon or spell damage. 
and Arcanist. Dealing damage with an Arcanist ability plus two random status effects to your target. This effect can occur once every seven seconds. Dealing damage with a Herald of Time ability reduces this cooldown by half a second up to every one second. So let me... Fuck. This is frustrating because all of these are proactive and some are definitely more tuned for PvE. Some are more maybe a little could be used in PvP. The Nightblade one is frustrating because it really is more of a PvP set and it's reactive. It'd be good if you went for a more tanky variation of a Nightblade. But the problem with that is, is that Wardens and DKs, especially Wardens, will out-tank a Nightblade every fucking time. God, that's frustrating. Item set curation additions. To assist with various item cheeses, so Tamriel, the Fallen Coffers will not offer curation. As with all curation, the Coffer on Warden. Okay, cool. Undaunted Monster Set Coffers. This affects the Coffers offered by uh, the Easy, Medium, Hard. Mystery Coffers are not affected by curation. These coffers will be for sale for eight daunted keys. Imperial City Monster Set Shoulder Coffers, Weekly Trial Reward Coffers. Why is my... I... Okay. Sorry about that. I don't know why I was doing this. Alright. Master Rit Vendor Offering Adjustments. New, there are new Master Furnishing plans. Um, the previous seven Master Furnishing plans, which were introduced in Sides of Athalia, have been moved to Fatisnia for a discounted individual price at 100 Rit vouchers each. Uh, seven hundred Rit vouchers get you everything in the Necron Furnishing Folio. Cool. New collectibles, new body and face markings, new customized action of uh, for mining. Oh, that's cool for 50 Master Rits. I can afford that. Cumberland Cavalier style uh, pages are purchased from more researchers with alliance points. Same with Thane of Folk, the new style pages. That's cool. Um, some new achievements and titles, not preview improvements. Uh... Nice. Last, remember the last selected guild store bank. That's actually very useful because I do, because I'm part of two two trading guilds, uh, AG and COT. Uh, let's fucking go. Um, so it'd be nice to be able to like default to those instead of the top of the list. Uh, battlegrounds changes. If you if you queue into an active solo solo random battleground event. Then backfill a team after a player leaves. You may be stuck in a loading screen. Restarting your client should work on these. Okay. Uh, Mundus, you cannot enter as Mundus Stone to gain effect while list sets to limited visitor permissions in the house. Currently, Mundus Stones require visitor permissions. This is not intended. Okay, they're going to fix that. Moving on to combat and abilities. We're going to start with the Arcanist. They're on the tomb. Uh, the Cephalarch's Flail Morph no longer. Gains execute scaling damage. The healing from this morph now only occurs with the ability of. Okay, cool. Tentacle Urge Red. This morph now increases its damage done by 33% uh, per crux consumed, up from 20. Uh, Curate of Rune forms the Vitalizing Griff morph. Uh, they fix the bug. Necromancer. Added major and minor effects to numerous necromantic abilities to help the caster better and feeble their foes. And empower themselves with the taste of death. The following minions and abilities will only generate a corpse if their summoner was also in combat, in efforts to the, reduce the ability to generate ultimate out of combat. So basically, everything that we'll do will mention. Um, Grave Lord, Boneyard, this ability and its morphs now apply minor vulnerability to enemies inside the area. The chill of death brings those quick blah blah blah. Uh, minor and an unnerving Boneyard, uh, uh, minor vulnerability and breach now persists on enemies for a 4.1 seconds tick rather than only while inside the area. Sacrificial Bones, the, this ability and the and one of its mores no longer require you to be in combat in order to cast them. Shock and Siphon, 
uh, its ability to morph to now also grant you major prophecy and savagery imagery for 20 seconds after casting. Uh, bone armor, uh, it now it gives minor resolve. Uh, bone totem gives uh, applies like major cowardice. Uh, ghostly embrace. This morph now also deals damage equal to half a normal effect area effect. Spammable attack to enemies in each patch. The ability now ranks up 1.1% damage per rank rather than adding a, th uh, a 3, a 0.333 millisecond to each negative effect per rank. Nightblade! Alright, this is where I'm actually going to be useful because I love this class and I know it. So they've shifted numerous Nightblade abilities to improve their thematic tie to the skill line, while simultaneously reinacing some long-standing balance and choose the classes had in PvP environments. Motherfucker, what are you about to take from us again? These changes are listed below. Moved Blur and its morphs out of the Assassination skill line and into the Shadow skill line. Blur is now the first ability in the Shadow line, taking the place of Veiled Strike. This means Blur and its morphs will now be treated as Shadow abilities and interact with Augments that come from the Shadow skill line rather than the Assassination. Move sh Veiled Strike from Shadow to Assassination. I guess I can understand that. Veil Strike is now the first ability in the Sash skill line for taking place with Assassin's Blade. This means Veil Strike and its more so not sure the Uh moved Assassin's Blade is more into the original slot blur originally occupied. Um We are going through and cleaning up large inconsistencies with the Nightblade class by reorganizing some abilities that fell out of place both thematically from their skill line. As well as balance wise, blur an ability that focuses on uh, aiding your evasive tank like capabilities is now placed in shadow as it operates more heavily within that theme in the skill line's intent. That's fair. Veil Strike, an ability that focuses on dealing consistent and precise damage, has been moved to the skill line that focuses on those elements, and no longer adds bonuses to your survivability, like triggering the Shadow Barrier passive, but instead offers damage-focused bonuses like hemorrhage and crush points. Ah, uh, you know what? Fair. With these adjustments, we hope to rein in and organize some of the bonuses, classes, and miraculous, so it feels more sensible and balanced overall. Shadow Barrier in this passive now grants major resolve for seven for six uh, to twelve seconds rather than uh, three to six seconds. It now increases by two seconds per piece of heavy armor worn at either rank rather than extending the duration by twenty five percent. That's uh, now that Veil Strike no longer activates as passive, we're making it easier for the class for the class as a whole. Uh, while still creating incentives to benefit tanks over damage dealers. So overall, this should be easier to upkeep at all levels, but should still have less uptime for Nightblades that aren't engaging with the more evasive side of the tool yet. That's fine. Um, siphoning, Strife. Fix an issue with the ability that failed. More fixed an issue where this ability and its more heal, healing failed to activate the target's blocking. Funnel Health, it now heals up to three targets rather than two, so it's more power upgrade is similar to Radiating Regeneration. You know what? I like that. That's well overdue. Um, I kind of want to fiddle with with uh, a Nightblade now just to kind of see how those kind of changed. Uh, Sork just had a changes to Deja Curse. Uh, the ability is forced off the other full damage in an area around the cursed enemy rather than dealing the full damage to the cursed enemy in half in the area around it. You know what? Good. That makes the, that that is an annoy that has always been like a disengaged skill for me as a ganker. Uh, this damage can no longer be blocked. This feature was never mess messaged on the ability and is not considered a damage over time, nor is it a damage based on the that's less good. Deja Cray, this morph now properly mentions the force of your active as you prioritize the target. Cool. Uh, Templars, Divine Wrath, Radiant Destruction. Fix an issue where it would. Okay, so they fixed a bug. Solar Flare, uh, increase the duration of Sun Sphere and Empower Granted. And Dark Flare morph up to 10 seconds up from 5. Warden. Uh, lots of changes to Art under a uh, Target Blast. Uh, I don't care enough about words, I hate you. Weapons, structures to have ancient knowledge, fix an issue where the passive can cause your health bar to glow permanently. 
So that's what that's from. Oh, I never knew. Elemental susceptibility, uh, it, this prevented it from... It, that makes sense. Glad that that's not a thing anymore. Shrouded daggers, uh, yep, they fix the bug there. Silver bolts, silver leash, fix the bug. Entropy, structured entropy, fix an issue where it's more could, could remove stealth in this ability. Okay, cool. Good. I'm glad that there's less things to knock me out of stealth now. Skill styling fixes, uh, werewolf fixes, vampire fixes on death. Defense now reduces damage taken by 7 to 15, down from 15 to 30. I, here's the thing. There, like, there needs to be a vampire rework to where to make they, what they need to do with the vampire ability, vampire vampirism functionally, is they just need to make it. They need to have like the buffs and shit for it, like they do, like normal. And then they need to make all of the skills and abilities and shit that come with it be like like they need to refactor that to use the scion. Like the scion, like should be more like the fucking. If I'm being it's like the where the, the, the it like the, it should function like 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 in front but that's just me. Uh, changes to the champion system, uh, added scrimming ultra serial base camps in the Pico City sewers. That's very good, thank you very much. Uh, it's better aligned with other special character materials. We added additional sources for luminous ink. Uh, that's good. Uh, changes to grimoires, not particularly very bad. All of these will not be able to use the Frost Focus script. Cool. Uh, moving on. And now we're into some bug fizzes and things of that nature. Uh, I'm going to not go line by line here. I am, but I am going to like, look for some sets that are... Like, look for some sets that jump out at me. Things that I might use or care about. Um, Roland sets. Sets. Yeah, nothing I can see. Uh, it's uh, super pertinent. Quest fixes for all of this. Fine and dandy. Lovely. All right, but, but ladies and gentlemen, that is the patch notes. Uh, I'm sure you can watch somebody better, but if you made it to the end of the episode, uh, thank you. Um, stick around for pre-recorded Evan giving a spiel. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to, you want to talk to me outside of this video, outside of live streams, or just be able to join the community and be a part of it, you can do so at hivmedia.com. I'd love to have you. And given the financial situation of the this is that if you have the scratch to, to spare, donating and becoming a supporter at hivmedia.gg. All of our perks are serviced through our Discord channel, including early access videos, expand more. Your generosity is a blessing, and a dollar a month is a boon to my bank account. Thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate you, and have a great day.